I'm Matt Vest, and this is a podcast about being friends with those who have a different worldview than you. We laugh, we cry, we disagree, but in the end, we're always friends. This is Matt Vest versus his friends. Welcome to Richard Lushbaugh versus his friends, the only podcast where Matt didn't want to come up with something, so he just said, hey, Richard, you do it. Bam, now I'm doing it. Here we are. <laughs> That's not a... Okay, That's it's... somewhat true. Matt didn't... He, he couldn't find any news stories or anything that he liked, so he just said, hey, Richard, why don't you just do the podcast and you can interview me? I'm like, hokey doke. That's fine. We'll do it. That's fine. We'll do it. Let's go. Let's go. Here we go. Just go. I'm going. We're going. This is going. So, Matt, how was your week? It was good. It was uh, normal. Nothing exciting. I did see Captain America today. You suck. He saw Captain America without me. Thanks for that. That's great. I saw it without a lot of people. Danny uh-huh. didn't go with me. <clears throat> Megan uh-huh. didn't go with me. Uh-huh. Uh, Steve didn't go with me. Steven Spielberg? Yeah. Steven yeah. Spielberg. Yeah. The Jesus President Obama wasn't there. No. Um, no. Genghis Khan wasn't there with you. No. Uh, let's there. see. Who else? Patrick Stewart was there. Oddly Steven. enough, he was there. Oh, he was there. Oh, good. Good for him. Good for him. Yeah. So. What about David Prowse? Nope, not there. No. Okay. <laughs> He's a tall man, David Prowse. You don't know who he is, do you? No, I do. Darth Vader. Right? All right, then. No, I was going to have to hit you no, with something. No, the, the look on my face was, um, <clears throat> I think he passed away. But no. Did he? I don't think so. I don't think. I, no, I don't think That's so. why I second-guessed myself before I said it. But now I put it out there, and now it's there. Right? <laughs> well, we got to work some Star Wars into the show. Exactly. To make uh, Um OK John happy. Or, or one. That's his name? Um yeah. OK John? Well, that's his, like, uh, Instagram and Twitter handle. Oh. Hi, I'm okay, John. <laughs> How are you? Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the show. <laughs> no, we won't. Oh. We're just here today. So, Richard, did you do anything exciting? Um, I didn't really do anything exciting this week. No, I don't know why we do the week recap thing. I mean, you can pretty much just say how you've been, and then, you know. Somebody say, like, oh, yeah, I, I went to the moon. Fine, how have you been? <laughs> oh, so terrible. If only you'd ask me how my week was. <laughs> you ruined my life. I had a good story. Like, you, you ruined it. You phrased the you question You phrased the wrong. question a different way, and it just completely destroyed what I was going to tell you. Uh, now I tell you nothing. Terrible. Terrible man. So. So, did you, did, did you want to do the, uh, the question of the week? Because we can do it. We'll do it. You want to do? We'll do it. We'll do your question of the week. Yeah, go Matt's ahead. question of the week this week was: If you don't vote, um, do you still have the right to complain? I mean, it's not the way I phrased it. I rephrased it for you. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> same idea. Well, I don't so, have it written down or anything. Right. So, so is it true that if you don't vote, you don't have a right to complain? Yes. What do you think? Obviously, you made the question. You have an opinion. I mean, I get the spirit of where that came from. So, I, I, it's like I get it, but now it seems like, mm, I don't know, maybe I do have a right to complain. Like, like if, if both choices are so unbelievably bad, you're just terrible. Like, I don't know what to do now. I mean, I don't think it's, you know, entirely true that, that both are equally terrible. No, I, I wouldn't <laughs> say that at all. No way. But, um, and the, the truth is... Anything could go at this moment. Like, I do feel like there might be just, like, riots of the Republican Party at this point for people trying to stop him. And there are ways for them to stop Trump from becoming... Yeah, but it seems more like it's people are actually falling into line. Like, some people who don't support him are, like, changing their minds and stuff. Well, like, um, gosh, what's the Speaker of the House name? Gosh. I don't know. The last one was uh, that horrible boner guy. (laughs) God, that guy uh, was awful. Ryan, why can't they? The think? one who said he'd rather uh, he, he said if, uh, he'd rather kill himself than raise the minimum wage. What is that guy? What is Ryan? Paul uh, Ryan? Paul Ryan? There we go. Couldn't remember that. Yeah, <laughs> couldn't remember too. First couldn't names. remember the, the name Paul. Okay. <laughs> uh, Paul Ryan. Yeah, he basically was like, "Well, I'm not ready to endorse Trump." And it, I don't know. I don't think he said yet. I think no, right now. So it, he's gonna. They're all gonna. Yeah, 
They're all it's gonna basically fall in he's, line. Gonna, he's gonna meet with Trump and go. Are you gonna calm down a little? Like, if you're gonna bring it down a notch, because <laughs> I'll I'll back you if you just bring it down a notch. Well, that's the that's the thing that really scares me is that um, <clears throat> is that he has even a ghost of a chance, and that maybe he will like maybe his advisors will get him to like turn it down a notch for the next you know several months so right. he can win the election and then go back to being a lunatic. And kill us all. Yeah. I do think that you, you can have a, a stance and just say, like, look, I don't like any of the major candidates. And I don't know if I always, you know, hold to the idea that if you vote for some off third party person that you're throwing your vote away. I do. That's just usually what happens just in. Yeah, sort of. <clears throat> The, just the way things work out. So I get the argument, but at the same time, but I do think that you should make a stance and vote your conscience. I honestly think that, because from, from a lot of the things I've heard about people talking about the elections in the United States and how it works here, um, I think we, we do it very much uh, backwards. And we're always talking about exporting democracy to other countries and stuff when we have it completely wrong here. Like, um, what do you mean we do it backwards? Do what backwards? Try to um, make it harder for people to vote, and oh. we we have extremely low voter turnout, and um, other countries uh, don't always have this problem. And I think uh, I believe it's Australia. Is it really that? that okay, you, this is my question. Is it really that hard to vote? Well, no. For some people, they, they they're trying. Basically, um, it's it's been a thing for for many years for the Republican side to try to make it more difficult in some areas for like right, the, certain kinds the, of people, like ethnic minorities, various type. They try to make it more difficult for them to vote. Yeah, like like was four um, areas, yeah, ghettos, and yeah, exactly. They try to make it more like um, oh, you need to have like ten forms of ID and be able to do a backflip. I don't know, you know, <laughs> which <clears throat> I'm fairly certain I've never shown ID. I've never shown ID. Yeah. No. That's, we're, we're white, so they expect us to vote Republican, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> or, well, Go figure. No, at the very least, know. the argument is they expect us to be honest somehow. I, well, you know. <laughs> apparently you, can, there are no apparently you can judge someone's honesty <laughs> by the color of their skin. That's, that's <laughs> exactly interesting idea. Interesting. I don't well, you're white, tested. so you clearly must be answering all these questions correctly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think they care if you answer correctly. Just you have to vote the way they want you to. Yeah, well, like wasn't there? There was a story about a polling place um, d- uh, during one of the primaries recently, where they they basically said um, they they had like they had like a thing where they're they saying you have to vote Republican if if you're going to vote here. I think it was in Florida or something. I remember um, seeing something about that. Florida, <laughs> and but, then those people got in a lot of trouble for 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 doing that. Basically. Really? <laughs> yes. Of course. Does that surprise you? Come on. Yes. Really? Still? That surprises you? To be that blunt about it. You- you know, like, the whole ID thing, I'm like, okay, we should prove who we are so at least, you know, someone's not voting either twice or in the name of someone else or something like that. I get that. But to say, if you come here... Yeah, but couldn't technically <laughs> any of us work at a polling place? Couldn't, couldn't technically you or I get a job at a polling place? I don't know how that works, but sure. Anybody could do... Then, then so you just get somebody there who's just a jerk and a crazy person. There you go. Bam. Right. Now that happens. They say, I'm not going to let you vote here unless you vote for the cheese sandwich man. Well, they do go inside the booth and like, hey, who are you voting for? <laughs> what are you what doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Did you vote correctly? <laughs> Did you vote Democrat? <laughs> I'll kill you! <laughs> Metaphorically. <laughs> with words. Yes, with words. Uh... You won't get a sticker when you leave. Yes, you won't get one of those I voted stickers. You'll get one that says, I voted incorrectly. I didn't vote for the correct candidate at my polling place because I live in Florida. So you think it's backwards because we make it so hard to vote? Yeah, I've heard uh, that that it's uh, illegal not to vote in uh, Australia. Compulsory Mm. voting. Which, I mean... Let's face it, the thing that we all uh, think is stupid about the Affordable Care Act was the fact that they made it so that it was, you know, now essentially illegal to not buy insurance. Right. Which, that is that is asinine. We all agree that that's stupid. No one likes that, right? Right. But, um, I mean, if you're going to make something 
a law? Shouldn't it be something like that? Shouldn't it be everyone has to vote? Because, I mean, like, the voter turnout is always appalling. Like, most people don't vote, it seems. Does it... Does it go... The percentage is always... I've heard so many different statistics and... But it's always pretty bad. It's always surprising for for the fact that we, you know, we, we say, oh, we're, we're going to, you know, export democracy to all these other countries, but then most people here don't even vote. Yeah. And honestly, I think... Uh, uh, maybe a, a part of it might be because I've known lots of people over the years. Oh, hold on, can I interrupt you? Yes, you can. I, I just looked online. Um, okay, what does it say? It says, "Is it illegal not to vote in Australia?" Yes, under federal uh, <clears throat> electoral law, it is complete. I don't know. You read. That <laughs> <word>. <laughs> All right, what are we doing? <clears throat> Compulsory for all eligible right. Australian citizens to enroll and vote in federal elections. So, yes, it is. Illegal. Yeah. Yes. Now look up the statistics for uh, Americans voting in elections. Yeah, we'll be We're going to look up. Uh, why? What if your phone got, like, no serve? You just got this phone. Yes. It should be the fastest, amazingest phone in the world. It's just... got Apple on it and everything. <laughs> Come on, um, man. Let's get this going. Hold on. All right. Matt's going to look that up. But anyways, no, I've, I've heard, I've had conversations with lots of different people who say that all the candidates are the same, that they're all just puppets for the people who are in charge, blah, 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 which I'm sure is to some small extent true, but I just don't think it's true to the extent that people would say, you know what I mean? I don't think it's true to the extent that they're making it out to be. I don't believe that at all. I don't think that we're all controlled by the lizard alien Illuminati and that they're all just puppets, <laughs> and that they're secretly lizards, and that they're wearing masks of people. I think that's bullcrap. So I do have something. Okay, uh, what do you have? According to statisticbrain.com. Okay, let, statistic let, brain. Let that, you know, so take it with a grain of salt, because I've never <laughs> heard of this. It's a brain. It's a, but a, it's a jar. It does sound like a statistic I've heard before. Okay. So, uh, 57.5%. Of Americans who voted in the 2000 presidential election, so under 60 percent of yes. people vote, and that's there. It does break it down in there on race and gender and all that. Um, yeah, but that's surprising. That's quite yeah, low for that, the country who basically is is all about democracy and says democracy is the most important form of government ever devised. But you know, I'm not going to vote. Screw it. Yeah, <laughs> I got stuff to do. Well, no, you know what? It was. Um, that's the thing. That's the thing. Not just compulsory elections, right? Yeah. In other countries. In other countries, it will be a, a federal holiday to the, the day of the election. Yes. Yeah. You, so no one can say, I have to work. They just, everybody, you know what I mean? Like, they make it easier to vote or we make it harder. You know what I mean? Unnecessarily. And I think the reason they do that is because it can get someone like Trump elected. I mean, let's yeah. face it. That's what they're hoping for. They're hoping that people either... <clears throat> I mean, they're hoping that people either hate Hillary enough to not vote for her and to vote for Trump, Which by or that people will hate both of them and not vote at all, so that the only people that do vote are the ones who are motivated, and the people who are motivated are the people who are crazy for Trump and think that he's going to, you know, finally get up there and say those wonderful racist things they've always been thinking and finally get those things out in the open. Yeah. Because no one's ever said anything racist in public before. <laughs> so no. finally get those 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 opinions that are secretly being held that are unpopular because political correctness is destroying the country. What we need is complete, total honesty about the horrible things you're secretly thinking. <laughs> right. All them people that think kind of different than me need to be killed. <laughs> right. It's like, yes, I agree that uh, humans in general need to be more transparent with who they are. But there's safe places for that. And there should definitely not be people getting elected <laughs> right. on, on saying horrible things. <laughs> right. It's like, yes, have I ever wanted to punch someone in the face? Yes. Actually punching them in the face And is should not you advised. be elected based on the face-punching policy <laughs> because of low voter turnout and because the people who are so pro-face-punching are motivated by your crazy face-punching policy. Now, should I tell my close friends or my wife or my therapist? Yes. yes. If I have feelings of <laughs> frustration and anger, those people I should but tell. But should you found a, p a political party called the Face Punchers and have rallies with, with big fists on the shirt going, yes, punch the face! Yes, punch the face! No. 
<laughs> Not so much. And, and then I shouldn't be elected. Yes. So, like, I mean, I honestly think, you know, if, if we were like that, say we had compulsory voting, right, like Australia, yeah. say it was illegal not to vote, I don't think someone like Trump would ever be elected. No. No. It just yeah. wouldn't happen. No. Uh, it, in the end, though, like, especially sort of going back to the question, like, while I understand the frustration of, you know, sometimes you feel like your vote won't matter if you vote for the less, the third party unpopular person, or if you feel like... I think third parties would stand a chance if if compul- right. voting was compulsory. So I, like, say, say, okay, here's, what, here's a scenario. Bernie Sanders doesn't get the Democratic nomination, mm-hmm. runs as a third party. Right. Under the current system, that would probably help Trump get elected. Right. And we would all die in a nuclear attack from uh, <laughs> North Korea when he goes on TV and goes, Kim, Kim Jong-il is a stupid moron and he's a dumb poopy pants and I don't think he even has any pants at all. Blah, 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 blah. And we would all die and Matt's about to choke on his water. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I like to do that. I like to kill Matt. <laughs> Yay, killing Matt. Yay. No, but what I was getting at, like, so... No, I, well, I didn't. I didn't oh, finish my. <laughs> I, I started to kill you, and I forgot what I was doing. I was focused on murdering you. Okay, so let's moving away from murdering Matt. So don't elect Richard. I'll kill yes. Matt later. I'll kill Matt later. Okay. No. So, but if he were to run as a third party, and everyone in the United States had to vote, they would probably vote for him. I think because there are people who may disagree with him, but I don't think there's very many people who vehemently hate him because he just. Right. I don't think he's done anything that was really hateful. You know what I mean? Where I mean, Hillary Clinton, I honestly don't understand the hate for her, but I just know that it's there. Like, I know you don't like her, quote-unquote, yeah. and my own mother hates her and doesn't know why. Yeah, I don't dislike her why. the way I don't dislike Trump. It's not the same thing. Exactly. But people don't like her. Yeah. So I think that if com- voting were compulsory, I think everyone would vote for Bernie Sanders if he were running as a third party. But as it stands... No one will vote for a third well, right, party. Some he, people will, but then it's it's not going to happen. Right, because even Trump tweeted out that Bernie should go rogue and go as, run his third party. Because he knows that'll help him get exactly, the Exactly, because everyone will go, no, 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 we don't want Bernie Sanders, so we'll it'll swing things a little bit his way. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, what, what I was getting at um, is that, like, I understand people not feeling like, one, that their voice is heard no matter what, even if they vote for the person that eventually wins, like, um, in general. And, yeah, I guess in some, even if you choose not to vote because you don't like what's going on, I guess you could, you can still complain and you should have a voice, but your voice really isn't being heard if you're just refusing to vote at all. Yeah, and like it's and only that, being heard by anyone with an earshot. Right, and that's when the system right or wrong as it may be, actually defeats you because it it got you to do the thing you didn't want you to do in the first place, which is care. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. I do agree, though, that we definitely, if... I think if we're going to have something... I mean, I'm not... I'm not against what Obama was trying to do with the Affordable Care Act. I am against the whole being forced to pay for something that you might not have money for. Yeah. But I think if we're going to have something at all as dumb as that mm-hmm. that's there that exists and you know the only alternative is republicans coming in saying like we're going to completely destroy it and go back to the way things were which no one liked yeah um but if we're going to have that can't we at least have something important be like mandatory like voting yeah you have to vote i don't and that's and then everyone's going to be like oh rock the vote you know and it's it's not you can't unless you force people sadly at gunpoint for some odd reason, you just can't get them to vote. Yeah. And I'm sure in some circumstances, it's basically based on it's difficult for them to vote. Like, again, we don't have a national holiday. They have to work, blah, 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 you know. Yeah. Or you have to have ten forms of ID. Maybe if we just had voting all on Saturdays. Why Tuesday? I wonder why. I'll look that up later. But You don't want to look it up now? You're, you're oh, phone's, we're going to waste your time phone's on sleeping. Show. It's nothing. We're only 19 minutes in. <laughs> we're, we're doing well, I think. Um, but, uh, yeah... Making either a national holiday. I mean, what? At yeah, but then don't even just make it a national holiday. Make it illegal not to vote. Because oh, right. if you make it a national holiday, everyone's just going to barbecue. 
What's wrong with that? <laughs> they're going to barbecue. They're going to wave a little flag around and go, God I'm bless America, saying. and they're not going to vote. I'm you saying. know they are. I'm just saying, like, if we can make, you know, National Talk Like a Pirate Day attention, <laughs> I'm sure we can. Yes, ev- but not everyone participates in National Talk Like a Pirate Day. Well, I'm just saying. I think Matt's trying to advocate for we need a law that you have to talk like a pirate on Talk Like a Pirate Day. It's December, or no, not December. Uh, September 19th, that's National Talk Like Pirate Day. And sh- what, what should be the law as far as uh, May the 4th? Should there be, like, you have to dress like a Star Wars character, or you have to at least know what Star Wars is? No. No? <laughs> I don't really care about making random things national holidays. Cause then Just the pirate one, though. Well, that's because, important look, at a certain point, if everything's super awesome, nothing is. <laughs> <laughs> nothing is. Like... And, you know, maybe that's me sort of getting in a... And I was talking to Megan about this this week. Um, that, like, I sort of intentionally didn't post any Star Wars things on on May 4th. Uh, because there's... You know, I love Star Wars and I love all things nerdy and all, all that stuff. But there's also a, a part of me that wants to rebel against the status quo. <laughs> <laughs> so when the status quo has become the thing that I like, I'm very confused emotionally. Like, but everyone's doing it. I don't want to do what everyone else is doing. I want to be me. That's funny. <laughs> but I still wore a Star Wars shirt that day. So <laughs> so you're not very good at it. I, I just didn't put it on Facebook. Oh. I see. So, and Facebook is what matters. So. <laughs> exactly. That's how we interact. It is now. real life. It's more than real life. <laughs> it's realer than real. So yeah, in the end, yeah, you can complain if you don't vote. I totally sympathize with people who don't want to vote, but you but should vote. You should still vote. Yes. Um. And and I think that's ultimately how they really win. You know. That by people by people not voting, not voting by not, by the people who are motivated by whatever. Thing happens to be their thing. They are the ones that vote, and then and everyone thing. else who thinks that that's an unreasonable premise doesn't. Yeah, then it's, yeah. Well, People like you had you had a uh, prop eight. You know, I mean, look at now. Now it's now it's fine. Now the the Supreme Court. Yeah. I mean, was that was a massive waste of time, money, effort on the part of bigots. <laughs> Good job, bigots. Way to try and make something a law that didn't need to be a law. Yeah. What'd you vote on Prop 8? <laughs> Did you vote? Yes. What'd you vote? Uh, how do I an- answer? Because By yes, yes you, you did or no, you didn't. <laughs> yes. So Matt voted yes on Prop 8. Yeah, no, I'm trying... <laughs> the phrasing of the question, like, because... Did you vote for or again... I voted for, and this is why, and it's a very simple reason at the time, and it had nothing to do with my... hated gays. Had nothing to do with that. (laughs) What I hated is, because what had happened in, what was it, 2003 or whatever, the the other, before Prop 8 was earlier. What? It was earlier. 2001, 2002? I think it was 2000. Okay, whatever. I think it was the first election I ever voted in, and I only voted in it because I was voting against the ban on gay marriage. Um, I that time I didn't vote because I felt like I didn't have a well formed opinion, so I just chose not to vote on the issue. You were right. Um. So, but when it came around again, but the the only reason it came around again was because judges people had decided. <laughs> To go against the will of the people, and in in our democracy, um, that doesn't always seem to be the right thing to do. To go against the will of the people. So, if the will of the people said this should be what happens, then that should be what happens. Some rogue judges don't get to come in and go, no. We, we're gonna... You're all dumb, and you don't know what you're talking about. You didn't understand the question. <laughs> well, yeah, but they did end up being dumb and not knowing what they were talking about. The they, Supreme Court ruled that way. Right, but not in the same way. The judges were basically saying, well, they didn't understand the wording of the law, and they don't, they don't know, and, um... And so, I guess... 
but the judges ruled that you can't put it on you can't make a law that way um, and that's fine but that's not what judges started to do like to um, who'd you vote for in the last election the last election when it was uh, Obama versus uh, Mitt Romney Obama yeah Mitt Romney <laughs> I'm interested to know uh, what what is your opinion on Bernie Sanders? Um, I think he has his heart in the right place, and I think um, I probably would have voted for him had he won, um, or had he gained the the nomination, um, simply because. You know, I think he was someone I think could have really done something. I know a lot of people look at what he would have done as being more socialist, and, and I don't think that's a fair representation of who he is. I think it's a simplification to just say because he wants more public services that you must be a socialist. <laughs> like that—that that can't be what the word means, right? So. Um, uh, I think that, you know, reading as much as I could about him, uh, you know, he'd someone who is consistent uh, in his views, in his stances. I do think that he wanted to work with people even. And that's you for me. That's the bigger issue. The selling point of who I'd elect as president is. Um, how operation, right? Basically, what Obama did that completely backfired for him. Yeah, where he would reach his hand across the aisle to the Republicans and, and then, then slap, slap it away. away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But at least he tried because there's a certain point where that's all you can do. I think now, towards the end of his presidency, he's just like, he's like, I don't care. He's like, <laughs> I don't even know what is wrong with you people. Like, you're absolutely insane. You still think I'm going to come take your guns? Yeah. So, um, so, and you know. For me, like, Hillary doesn't do that. I think Hillary's very, like, I hate this word, but I guess it's the best to describe the way I feel about her. Elitist. She's very, like, this. I don't really, honestly, I can't say that I know what her stance is on most things. Like, other than just... Well, that, and she has other contradicted than, herself. Other than just towing the, par- uh, towing the party line yeah. and just being a placeholder president. But I honestly can't say that I think she's left or right on any issues. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because she's, I mean, she's already was in the White House. She's been in politics forever. You know, yeah. it's like, I what would she do? I, nothing, really, probably. I mean, what do you think she would do? I mean, it's like, well, that's why I say when I'm saying, like, if, if I were to have to, if, if it's going to come down to Hillary versus Trump, to me, Hillary is just a placeholder president. She's not really going to do anything. No, yeah. No, I agree. And Trump is a lunatic who's probably going to get us all And killed. I agree, but th- and that's why I probably wouldn't have voted for her, um, especially if Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Because you know, you know. uh, while, while I'm sure he's, he would never be able to get all the things that he wants to done. No. Who even, even, if he got, even if he got any of them done, yeah. it would already be in a better place. I mean, we, <laughs> we still like to pretend that, um, that you know, adult, uh, our adult politics is any different than high school politics of yeah, like, it's the not. president getting up, <laughs> the guy the running for The fact that Trump could get, you know, elected is, is the, proves it's not. And, you know, the guy that gets up there and says, free ice cream every day for <laughs> everyone. Why? And it's like, yeah. And it uh, doesn't matter if that's actually Well, that and the fact is, if, you know, <laughs> it, it's, I, I, I see it this way, and I, I, I kind of assume others see it this way, too, but I don't know if it's as clear to everyone that it seems to me, with the current political climate and the current, with the pundancy and everything, and especially with Fox News, mm-hmm. that... Essentially, a Republican president can literally do no wrong, no matter what, like, no matter how incompetent and ridiculous they are, like, they can lie about weapons of mass destruction, and it's fine, but a Democratic president can do no right, and that, you know, they, 
lie about a oral sex situation, and it's impeachable. Yeah. I mean, is that like Obama's entire presidency? They're just like, he is the worst human being that has ever lived. He's gonna kill us all. And he's just like, it's like, what, what are you talking about? It's like people, we have a system of what? checks and balances for a reason. No one's gonna wake up. That's the thing, though. It's it's unbalanced now. It's like well, the, yeah. when if if you had say well you had Bush and you had a Republican um, Congress and and all that, mm-hmm. and he basically was able to do whatever he wanted to do. And no matter what he did, no matter how badly it went, everyone was just plotting, going, "You're the greatest person that's ever lived," and anyone who questions him is a traitor. Yeah. Remember when the when the the Dixie chicks were considered like. <laughs> Oh, right. <laughs> Traitors, you know? Yeah. And then now it's like, no, it's, you're a traitor if you don't say you want to assassinate the president. Which like, we don't, by the way, in case they're listening. No, there was a lot of people, like, amazing amounts of people who uh, were saying, like, they, they got in trouble. And they were, like, on Facebook saying, I want to kill the president of the yeah. United States of America. And then they would be surprised when the Secret Service would come to their door and go, what? <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, you can't. You can't do that. You can't say a Republican president can do no wrong. A Democratic president needs to be assassinated immediately because he's a Democrat. Therefore, he's evil. Yeah. Well, I, it's one of those things where I don't think most Republicans really think all Democrats are evil. Um, but that is definitely sort of the loudest voice that comes through. It's weird. And that's the big problem in our culture is that the loudest voice is the one we listen to and the one we we it's like they're wearing a democratic mask you know it's how they identify themselves well they're the loud one so we focus all our media attention on them and go well that guy you know is uh even though well even though we kind of deep down know he's he's slightly more extreme than the average person in that party but we're still going to talk like he's the norm. It's like, no, that's not how things work. It's And it's not fair to sort of treat it like that. And that and that goes for, you know, people, the same thing. They think that Muslims are like the extremists. They assume that all Muslims yeah, are they're like they're all going to try and kill us all. Every <laughs> single one of them. It's like one refugee gets in and does something bad. All refugees are bad. And all copies of the Koran come with a little vest full of dynamite that you can just wear and blow yourself up. So, you know, and all black people do this and all Hispanics do that and all white people are this way. And it's like, <clears throat> it, it's whatever sells and it's whatever, um, you know, gets attention. And now, I mean, that's what, you know, what television brought us uh, more than anything else is that the, we focus on the loud voice. And then... Well, interestingly enough, there, there were actually uh, uh, fairness uh, laws in place that... Um, any kind of any sort of news organization had to give equal time to an opposing viewpoint, but um, yeah. Ronald Reagan, towards the end of his presidency, basically um, made that no longer any any sort of thing. That's why Fox News is allowed to exist, and just endorse whoever and just endorse the one sided view and basically say, you know, no, we're right. Sorry, <laughs> right. Good job, Reagan. Yep. So, anyways. <laughs> Moving on, uh, we don't really have any news stories, do we? This is your show. Oh, okay, I forgot. So, in the news, <laughs> nothing's going on. I'm going to ask Matt some questions now, for just for fun. This is the sound of my paper. You can hear it. It's actually an envelope that I wrote the questions on, because I don't have paper. Except for the envelope. Well, the envelope is paper, but it's, you know... It's not like it's a There's a, a nice... lot of questions on that. Paper. There is not a lot of... You are not allowed to look at my paper. Okay. Get your own crumply envelope. <laughs> okay, the first question. Why haven't you gotten your own crumply envelope? <laughs> <laughs> There's probably a few over on that table over there. I can go Excellent. Okay, that's the wrong answer. Now, <laughs> moving on to the next question. Do you remember the first time you met me? He's thinking. He's making that um, thinking face that Matt makes when he thinks. I don't know. Not specifically the first time. I do so. What's of, your first memory of me? Obviously theater class. And I feel like it. I feel like the, the thing that you did that made me like, oh, I want to hang out with that person more 
was for theater class. We were just told to do a scene, mm -hmm. a monologue, basically, and you got up and did a spot on uh, Ace Ventura, um, you know, Jim Carrey impersonation or, or the monologue where he's, you know, going off. and That sounds like something I've done. Yeah. Revealing facts. So... Um, well, I yeah. guess that kind of goes into the, the next question of, what did you think? <laughs> you thought, I want to hang out with that guy, because he, he knows funny. about Jim Carrey. <laughs> he, right. So, he likes uh, funny things, and I like funny things. And What's your favorite memory of us hanging out? Oh. Breaking the couch. Is breaking the, the couch. sound of breaking the couch is his answer. Um... He's looking at the pictures on the wall and hopes he'll see something that will jog his memory no. to any time that we have hung out. Because you're not in any Because he doesn't remember. Um, that's not true. true. So is this going to be all questions <laughs> about you? I'm right there. There's me right there. That's I'm true. there. That's and true. then where else am I? Uh, anyway. Um, somewhere. Uh, it definitely somewhere. has to be Disneyland, I think... Uh, my bachelor party. Oh, yeah, that was fun. So, yeah. That was good time. Where I was just made to do a bunch of embarrassing yes. things. Yes, so. yes. And we, you wore the, the t-shirt that said uh, Captain Happy Pants. And um, you had big white Mickey gloves on. And it was basically all about just making you look like an idiot. And it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> so are these all going to be questions about how what I did so, you? <laughs> How much do you love me, and well, why do you want? I'm not <laughs> answering another. Question why do you want you. to exalt me? <laughs> what is the best thing about how great I am? I'm personally, not asking. we're going to pause this show. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's uh, uh, no. What is your all-time favorite song? Ooh, because I know you're you're a big music guy. So, what's your all-time favorite song? All-time favorite song. Uh. He's got to think about this one. This is a big decision. Yeah. Well, wow, you can pick a couple, I guess. I mean, what are your favorite songs? Um, I guess, really, it'd probably be DC Talks, Jesus Freak. What will people dream? Yeah, he used to sing that all the time in high yeah. school. So much so that it would get stuck in our heads. And yeah, we had, Richard knows. We had never even heard the song, but we we knew the part where the <laughs> I saw a man with a tat on his big fat belly and wiggled around like marmalade jelly. Took me a while to catch what it said because I had to mess the rhythm of the belly with my head. Jesus says is what it raised on a typical tattoo green. He stood on a box in the middle of the city and he said he had a dream. What will people say when it's they... <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing because I think uh, maybe a few months ago you got in the car and that was on the radio. Yeah. And you clearly knew it. Yeah. But before that, <laughs> I don't think it had been at least 10 years, nope. 15 years since we talked about nope. that song. Well, because you used to do it all the time. <laughs> I don't know if it's, I should be more embarrassed or you. Ah, both of us. Let's both yeah. be extremely embarrassed. So if I, if I really had to break it down, that's probably it. <laughs> Um, All right. I definitely know, like, that album. You know, anytime there's, like, you know, uh, you're stranded on a desert island. and What, <laughs> what, al what album would you want to have with you? Right. Like, I want food. No, you have to have an album. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no food nope. for you. Uh, that's albums usually on there. So On your stranded on a desert island list? Yep. Okay. Um, no one really has these anymore because no one can afford them. <laughs> but if you were to have a tombstone when you die, what would you want to have it say on the tombstone? Um, wow, this is going to be a real boring episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just going to say, he was alive. <laughs> Um, How about the lyrics from the Jesus Freak song? What will people say <laughs> yes, when they I hear that, that I'm a Jesus The entire freak. song. The entire... That's a lot of money. With a little CD that you can, like, pop into a little player and play. <laughs> Would you like to know what this song sounds like? Um, wow. Um... You know, I... I would How about just, Sucks to Be You? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in heaven. Sucks to Be You. Um... <laughs> I'll see you in hell. <laughs> from heaven. heaven. <laughs> Where's it? I know it's from The Simpsons, but who says it? In the no. No. Jim yeah, I, I, no, I think it was um, it was Reverend Lovejoy. Oh, right. Yeah. So. I'll see you in hell. And he opens the door again. From heaven. <laughs> right. 
that quote. Yes. <laughs> um, I, it, it's just got a... I've always been infatuated with the idea of integrity and just being the same person all the time. Um, so I, I would hope that at least that sentiment would somehow be reflected. Okay. I don't, I'm I, specifically? I, yeah, I can't think of any how you would <laughs> do that, but if... Yeah. Just put a really good quote on my tombstone. Yeah, exactly. I've told or the one before. by Reverend Love Joy, either way. <laughs> <laughs> With a little cartoon chiseled in of him doing it. <laughs> hey, this is a Simpsons thing. I like this guy. Let's dig him up and bring him back to yeah. life. So... I've told people before what I want, and it's very unrealistic, but I demand that it be done upon my death. I wish to be cryogenically frozen and placed into a massive pyramid um, that will be guarded by clones of myself with uh, heavy artillery, uh, and then they will inevitably wait for the cure for death, and then they will bring me back to life, and I will rule them. (laughs) So that that is what is to be done... With my body when I am that's dead. A, that's a tall order. I it is that. tall and it is great. I think that's impossible. All right. Well, this is a question that kind of relates to, uh, I think, a lot of people's fears of Trump as a president, and um, just in general the the sort of decline of America as an empire. Do you think, in your opinion, America could fall, quote unquote, like Rome did? Of course. Like, any country, any system that's built on humans can fall and fail and have misguided ideals and... and Do you think it's it's a likely possibility? Yes. Yeah? Do you think we could end up in another civil war? Yes. All right, then. It's one of... I don't think it's necessarily around the corner or in my lifetime... But yeah, absolutely. Like, um, especially if we don't do a better job of listening to people and um, and uh, you know, sort of going beyond our our own understanding of like experiences or ideals and beliefs, um, because that's that's the real big frustration for me in. In all of uh, politics and sort of uh, the public forum in general, is that is we stick we stick with our own tribe and we draw party lines as you would have it and go this is yeah. where I exist and that's where you exist and you stay over there and I'll stay over there I'll stay over here and um, it. It tends. It's super divisive, and it's not helpful. And that but, creates conflict. Yeah, yeah. and um, you know when we so easily just put out there like uh, all all poor people are lazy, all people on welfare are lazy, um, all rich people are uh, greedy, and all fat people are lazy and um, unwilling to do. You know, it can't be anything deeper than that. It can't be anything, you know... I mean, anyone who really thinks that um, people who are homeless are lazy does not even remotely understand how homeless people become homeless. The vast majority of people who are homeless are mentally ill. Yes. So, when you say that, you, you dismiss an entire group of people... To be something that it's just not statistically true. It's just not. Yeah. So if you like pull your head out of your ass for like two seconds and look it up and look into the situation, you will see and then that, that is not true. If you were to meet a homeless person and see that they're acting crazy, not assume, oh, well, they're just on drugs and right. they chose the drugs and they, so therefore they chose to be homeless. Yeah. No, they're mentally ill. Now, and, are and there lazy honest. people who are homeless? Because they uh, lacked some amount of motivation to, or they were overly picky about getting a certain job or any job. Yeah, of course there are. And are there people who did destroy their lives with drugs and ended up homeless and on drugs? Yes, of yes. course. But it is not the vast majority, so you yeah. have to actually stop speaking like it is. You know, so um, 
you know, what, you know, so if someone asks you the question, what should we do about the homeless population? Well, we tell them to get a job. No, that's not actually the problem. So yeah. good luck with that. It'd be <laughs> the same as me saying, like, all Republicans are like Trump or like Bush or neocons in general. Right. You take the worst example not, and go. It's not true. There are plenty of completely reasonable people out there who have that political slant to them. And, you know, it's it's not... It's not the case that they're all crazy. So if we if we cho- continuously choose not to see beyond ourselves, we will definitely we fall. will be our we will be our own demise, right? Because from not understanding, because one group of people um, <clears throat> will remain dis- disenfranchised and eventually rebel against the status quo, and who knows what the outcome of that will be. It, you know, it could fall like Rome, or it could be like the Hunger Games. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> which I still have yet to see. Oh, what's your problem? I would like to see it. I just have yet to see it. So, um, uh, one thing I wanted to t- talk to you about because I was I was at Subway and they were playing Kiss FM, and um, I was I was saddened by that, but um, it made me think about because um, I I actually listened last night to the podcast that you guys had done where you were talking before I got there. Uh-huh. About pop culture and mm-hmm. some sort of thing about Justin Bieber's like some guy who wrote a song for him or something. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Who is that and what? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> so, he, not he he didn't write the song to Justin Bieber. It's not yeah. No, I figured he wrote it for him. He wrote it for him, and just most pop artists have songs written by other people. I just don't understand because you're just like, oh, I'm used to talking to Richard, who doesn't know anything about pop culture. Like, well, do you know who Ed Sheeran is? No, no exactly. clue. That's but why? I mean. Why would that be important? That's right. the thing. I don't like pop culture because it's essentially things that are popular for no reason, just because everyone else likes them, and so therefore it's like, okay, well, that doesn't mean that I have to have an interest in it. I'm not interested in. it. I don't it. think you necessarily should. But the the point that I was making by that statement is. I'm used to talking to you who does not. Yeah, but you do know about these things and you keep track. That's why. I'm not don't... nearly as well as other people do, but sure. Well, yeah, I'm sure an actual, you know, 15 year old girl would know more about it than you would, but you do try and you always have been like in the know as far as contemporary popular culture, regardless of what it is. Um, are you asking me why? Yeah. Oh, like why? Because I hate it. I hate. I think popular culture is, especially now when things have gone sort of the Nicki Minaj way of just, and and the Kardashian way of where everyone, everyone is just scratching their heads like why is this a thing? And yet everyone's it's a thing and it is. And it's like, yes, but why is it a thing? It's awful. I mean, if you're talking, it's awful. Why do I listen to Justin? That particular. Why Justin do you listen to Justin Bieber? Well, I don't on a regular basis, but Liar. that song's kind of. Ah, but I mean, but it is. It's also just me, that particular issue, music. Uh, it's music that I find catchy, and there's probably some amount of idea in it that I identify with. It's a song about. Uh, realizing that someone is using you and uh, that they've always been using you and they're taking advantage of you and you basically just tell them you want them to go away and die as far as you're concerned. What was Baby 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 O about? I don't know. (laughs) You didn't analyze that one? Nope. (laughs) But, you know, it's pop music and it's fun to dance to and catchy to sing. Uh, And it doesn't... I I don't find it like... And here, the the sort of deeper reason um, sometimes may be that I I strive to be connected to the culture and the people around me, and pop culture is what's popular and what people know and talk about. And because you know, if your goal in life is to identify with people, you have to identify with, with the things. I suppose that's the primary difference. Um, between you and me as far as that is concerned because I've just the way I grew up I just never did feel connected to the culture around me like I I felt very specific and isolated like I would be like if I found something I was really into 
then, you know, that was what I was really into. But I wasn't really too concerned with what everyone else was into because I, you know, I wasn't interested. <laughs> it wasn't and, for me. And then obviously, like, I have things that I'm into that no one else, you know. Yeah, I still do. listen to ska and get crap for That's it all true. the time. No one else does. <laughs> You're the only one. Well, <laughs> I, it's ska is not popular like it's not part of pop culture right now and if it sort of you know shows up it's usually is to make fun of it um and uh so do you hope it's gonna make a comeback I'm not concerned about it <laughs> do you think it will uh probably not relatively soon just has it like been since the late 90s that it was big like cause that was when it was big right just yeah. the late 90s mm-hmm but since then, it's just been kind of underground, I yeah. guess you'd say. Well, it's, I would say in Orange County right now, it's fairly big. But then it's it just kind of never went it, away. It's, <laughs> it's one of those things like, and that's sort of the interesting thing about social media. You can have this perception in your own head that something is big because you and your culture and your tribe, whatever, talk about it all the time. And it's I there. actually saw something. Uh, no, okay, I didn't see it. I heard it on the radio. They yeah. were doing. A segment on the radio actually talking about exactly that, about how Facebook's uh, sort of like algorithms of mm-hmm. showing you more of what you've expressed an interest in have sort of helped to isolate people and put them in bubbles. And everyone's everyone just kind of lives in their bubble mm-hmm. and thinks that everyone else thinks the way that they do. And that's very interesting and strange. It's, it's also very dangerous. And that's why, you know, I think you one time asked me why do I follow, um, oh man, I can't, uh, Richard, Richard Dawkins, Dawkins yes. on Twitter. And that's just so I know what he's saying. Cause he talks a lot about, um, his atheist viewpoint and stuff like that. So it's, I know what he's saying. And that's a big reason why I follow a few other people just so I can have stuff to look at and read and, and watch videos of and, and sort of see what other people are saying. Um, Speaking of knowing about what's going on with things that you absolutely hate, did they really put Nicki Minaj on the cover of Time magazine? I have not seen it, but yes. Uh, Why? I think so. What reason could they have possibly had for doing that? Uh, maybe she... Did she kill a bunch of people? Maybe she... Because um, if, if usually it's hunger, your it's your a president. You killed a bunch of people. You're an Olympic athlete. You saved a bunch of people. You saved a bunch of people, and then killed them <laughs> right afterwards. I'm not sure that would end. Up I can't time. imagine why they would do that. Why yeah. they would have her on there? I don't know. You don't know. Man, they're terrible. just they're just like the the death of music. Here, there you go. <laughs> There's a poster child for death of music. Well, so. Ah, very disappointing. Yeah. Very, very, very disappointing. Things have just gotten so bad. Really? Yeah. Trump's yeah. running for president. Nicki Minaj exists. Is on time. Is on, is on the cover of Time. I mean, what? You know, what more could? Well, Jesus has been on like a thousand times. Why not Nicki Minaj? Just kidding. <laughs> I don't see the correlation. No, there isn't any. Ah, excellent. Good job. <laughs> well done. Well done, Matt. Well. I would say I think we're just about wrapped up. What do you think? Sure. Got anything else you wanna you wanna talk about or? No. No. All right. I well, mean, I can think of a thousand questions you could have asked me, but well, <laughs> well fine. What? What would you think of one then? Tell me what it is. What? what well, what? then it's just self indulgent. No, 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 no. It's self indulgent for me to ask you a billion questions about what you think of me. <laughs> Well, I'm not gonna. No. No, just one question that you can think of that you would like me to ask you. Okay. Come on. Uh, and I've got time. I'm kind of surprised that it wasn't on there. What? Um, I I thought you'd ask more about like my faith and why it exists and stuff like that. I already know the answer to those questions. Really? Yeah. Okay. What are they? Go ahead. Why do I believe in God? <laughs> Go quick now. When you're when you're. I think it was your grandmother passed, right? Wow, you remember a whole lot more than I give you credit for. <laughs> yeah. I have, well, I have a selective memory. I, I tend not to remember things that don't seem important, oh. but if, if, it depends. It depends if it seems important to me. I want to hear. I want to see. You, you, your grandmother passed, and you were, I think, thinking about that, and you suddenly got the idea in your head that... Uh, 
nothing was bigger or than God or something along those lines mm -hmm. or nothing was more in eternal or something, something along right. those lines. And that was what sort of steered you in that direction. Right. Is that a pretty good synopsis? Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't sort of all and it wasn't like, you know, that wasn't uh, the Superman putting on the suit day, but it's sort of as you would. Um, but that is sort of the, the crux of what holds uh, my faith in place in a lot of ways. So, yeah. So, see, I didn't need to ask the question. I already knew the answer. Yeah, but what about the rest of them? I don't... I think... Haven't we already talked... I mean, you've done, like, how many episodes? Like, almost 100. I'm sure you've talked about it before. Nope. Not no? on this podcast. Really? Nope. Oh. Not well, on any podcast. Then you all just learned something then. <laughs> well done. There we go. Yeah. Everybody just learned something that they probably should have known for quite some time. Well, because that's, like... It's it's something me. that just never came up. Because it's me talking to other people. Yeah, that's true. Even on the early episodes of this podcast, like people didn't they didn't ask me questions. I controlled the conversation. Yeah, that's true. So it wasn't something I was going to be like. Well, let me tell you why I believe in Jesus. Do you have, do you have any other things you think of? Because I, I can think of one that I'd like to ask. But Go ahead. I don't think the answer is going to be super deep or anything. Go ahead. If you could direct a Superman movie. What would you actually want to put in it? Ooh. This would be a, as, a, as a big Superman fan, someone who's wearing a Superman t-shirt and has a Superman comic book right over the top of the back of his head, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you'd have a strong opinion about what sort of Superman movie you'd want to see, because obviously they did... Am I answering this question... They did... Um, in you the, know, Superman Returns, where he fought Lex Luthor again, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and everyone no, no, no. was disappointed. They so, did Man of Steel, where he fought Zod, and everyone was like, uh, again. again with Zod. <laughs> Then they did the recent one where apparently Doomsday's involved. But what would you do if you could make the ultimate Superman movie? Okay, am, am I answering this question question where all those previous Superman movies exist, sort of like now? Or am I answering it in the framework of... I suppose... Maybe Richard Donner's movies existed, but everything from Superman, Superman Returns on doesn't. I suppose... Uh... <laughs> Because they might be, they might be yeah, very different. I, I can imagine it might be slightly different. I, I would say, in the context of those movies, do exist, but maybe it's maybe um, Batman versus Superman didn't do well, and, and so they wanted and to it, reboot and, it and again. It, exactly, and it's eight years later or something, and they're like, Matt, you're the guy, uh, you're our man, you got to do it. What would you want to do? One, I definitely would not do an origin story at that point. Uh, I would, you would definitely. There might be flashbacks to things like yeah. there always is. Because I think that does need to sometimes happen. But everyone knows where he came from. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you can fill those gaps in conversation of present day without actually having to go back. In Man of Steel, they actually did do a lot of that. They did a lot of flashbacks. Yeah. I mean, they did start it with him on Krypton. Well, it was very Batman Begins-like. where. Um, but, so he would, he would already exist. Um, he probably... Um, in the sense that... Would the world know about him yet? Yes. Um, I would think... But I would think it would be, like, sort of just after it happened. Yeah. Um, but you as the... So, like, they would know he had met Lois Lane. They'd had, you know, an interview. So it'd be like, kind of like Superman Returns. Yes. Sort of. So not those types of things had happened, but... Now, I, I definitely would not do... I wouldn't do Lex. I wouldn't do... Um, I would probably do something along the lines of um, uh, a more down-to-earth uh, corruption. Superman trying to stop, like... As simple as it sounds, the mob. Or something. Some local... Metropolis based issue, issue of like um, you wouldn't want him to fight any of the like big villains like uh, Brainiac or no not off first and obviously that's why a lot of people were like well why wouldn't you just have him fight Luther and I'm like I would treat it more like Luther's that's the thing that's coming yeah and um, so maybe he would be in there but there wouldn't be he wouldn't no, there'd be evil intent. I would, and I would definitely make Luther a flat out sensible mogul. Um, but it would be, 
<clears throat> you know, it'd be more like um, Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. Not as sort of goofy, and, like, <laughs> just, but like tone-wise where it was like, uh, you know, cut, you know, so Lois and Clark are going after a story and it just involves Superman rather than it being, you know, um, yeah, rather than being some space alien. I would ground it more in Metropolis and then the movies that that go on from it. Cause if there were sequels. If there were sequels, yes. Um, because that's been the biggest problem in, I think, most movies now is that they're trying to tie a bigger story um, and that's where they end up failing so um, I think uh, with have you seen have you been following Gotham mm-hmm. I was really into it and I was really getting into it but um, I there's a there's a few episodes I've missed and I feel like they might be starting to lose me now because um, mostly just because the whole um, setting up of that Jerome kid uh-huh. as like possibly the Joker and then just killing him off like I felt like that was them just like jerking the audience around yeah and I'm I don't want to be jerked around I just want to, just tell me the story don't yeah. don't like mess with me you know that's obnoxious stupid so you don't like I don't like that sort of thing mm-hmm. like cause cause and then I I'd actually cause they had like the one where the comedian was ta- doing a bit yeah, like yeah. oh maybe that's a Joker but they're like the creator said no there'll be like several false jokers or something but to have it go that far and to be the character you think it's going to be and then they just kill him off like, right they, they that's gave, just stupid they gave a lot of hints at that it yeah. wasn't just like the comedian in the background it yeah was, it was a big thing and, and it made him laugh like, and they're like no look like him and um and I kind of wonder too if they're going to do it like they did with um Smallville where it like <laughs> where like they just do everything and he's not even Batman yet yeah which is part of <laughs> But I think this is doing it better because it focuses a lot on Jim Gordon, so at least that's, you know, something. But, yeah, it is sort of, like, cheating. Like, we're going to do everything but the thing that's really expensive. (laughs) Yeah, well, I haven't seen the Mr. Freeze episode yet. I Actually, I don't think I have. I'm a few behind. Okay. Of current. Well, because one of the first things you see of him is he's wearing these white goggles that are literally the Willy Wonka goggles from the Tim Burton movie. I think I saw it in the trailer. Um, Come on, guys. Spend (laughs) some money. Really? I mean, I know not everyone's going to know that. It wasn't the biggest movie of all time, but I do. Yeah. I mean... Really? Your prop guy's just like, here, use these! <laughs> I know they're famous for something else, but just use them for this. <laughs> really? Yeah. Come on, guys! Come on! Yeah. That's my thing. Batman's my thing, Superman's your thing. Yeah. So, so, anyways, yeah, but thanks for hanging out with us for an hour and two minutes and 44 seconds. 45 seconds? 46 seconds? Oh, he's done. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and sign off now. We Actually, hope this, this is uh, where I'll take over. Is You're uh, going to take over now? Ahead. All right. So, so Matt's going to take over I'm now. I'm going to interject something really quick. Thanks for hanging out with us. And um, Facebook.com slash the director movie, all one word. Yeah. Uh, you can find um, more information about this podcast on uh, Facebook.com slash Matt Vest versus his friends. And uh, if this is your first one listening to of what? This po- <laughs> if this is the first time you've listened to Matt Vest versus his friends, this episode is very confusing to the rest of the, I don't uh, think this would be the first episode they'd listen to. No, it's true. But, um, anyway, uh, so if you want to find out more, go to facebook.com slash Matt Vest versus, versus his friends. Check out some of the other episodes. Yes. You can find us on YouTube now. Yay! Whoa, YouTube. Um, so you can just go to YouTube, uh, search Matt Vest versus his friends. We're gonna, we're definitely gonna put up the new episodes as they come out on YouTube, and uh, hopefully, eventually, put up um, older ones. Maybe but, a few decades, <laughs> but uh, that may take a while because there's like you know seventy four other episodes. So. Um, yeah, thanks for hanging out, and uh, hope you got to know us a little bit better. Hope you learned a little bit about Matt and his strange behaviors. You could, you could have like really, you should have asked more. What? <laughs> what did you want me to ask? <laughs> I'm just telling. Just like, have you ever had a problem with your butt? <laughs> yes. Is that what you want me to ask? Yes. Ask. No, just kidding. I don't know. Sorry. Sorry, <laughs> Mister Criticism. <laughs> um. 
No, but yeah, thanks for hanging out with us, and you should definitely check us out on the interwebs. You already said that. And uh, also, you should definitely tell your friends about us. Uh, we definitely appreciate all that and feedback. Uh, if you like this episode, didn't like this episode, uh, just don't be a jerk about it. If you don't like it, be a civil human being. Uh, so yeah, we. And the same goes for any episode. That Click you, like. Yeah. And, and sh- comment. And share and comment. Yeah, all that good stuff. All right, thanks for hanging out. Facebook.com slash the director movie, all one word. That's Richard's thing. You should definitely check that out. Facebook.com slash the director movie, all one word. All right, thanks for hanging out. <laughs> all right, bye. Bye, everyone. So we're testing. Does it worky worky? It worky worky, but not if you jerky jerky. But a, what if you twerky twerky? I don't know. That Maybe. didn't. <laughs> what? That, that didn't, didn't rhyme. rhyme at all. That was horrible. I failed. Failure.